welcome to the Fit Diet Podcast, where we'll learn the processes and habits of healthy eating, exercise, and lifestyle. Food for fitness, if you will, with the founders of MindMuscleMemory.com, Miles Betcha and Greg Rando. Miles' expertise with programs and coaching have led him to training thousands of clients all over for the past two decades with enormous success, and he's dedicated himself to transforming the course of fitness and health for many. And his partner, Greg Rando, has his own unique skill set as a professional in the world of bodybuilding, with the ability to teach and inspire all he comes in contact with. Join me now as we discover the secrets of sticky fiber and proper habits and how to implement the MindMuscleMemory.com lifestyle. Welcome in and thanks for listening. And welcome into yet another episode of the Fit Diet Podcast brought to you by MindMuscleMemory.com. That's M3. And uh, along with its founders, Miles Betch and Greg Rando, I'm your host, Bobby Stein and fellas. Are you there, and how are you today? Hey, Bobby. I'm doing well it's over here. Thank you. Nice, nice. Yeah, really good, really good. Good uh, good to be on today. Well, I wish I could brag the same, because living here in southwest Florida, Miles, without air conditioning, um, just uh, came to light about 15 minutes ago. I will not have to do cardio for three days. <laughs> I do what believe. happened, Bobby? You lose. I don't know. I'm out power? there. I'm acting like a uh, uh, the the Maytag man, you know, popping circuit breakers and whatnot. So um, I appreciate your <laughs> your patience. And if I get a little sloppy, it's just because sweat's in my eye and uh, I'm losing concentration. <laughs> but the audience oh, doesn't. Best of luck to get it back on. Please. Yeah, buddy. From your lips to God's ear. But um, <laughs> we appreciate you guys coming on today and uh, discussing with the folks out there. We got a topic, uh, it looks like 17 foods you didn't even know could improve your protein digestion and contain sticky fiber. That's uh, soluble fiber. Um, Miles, you say, don't make nutrition diet and losing inches harder than it needs to be, right? Sticky fiber in the M3 methods will set you on the right path for success. So would you like to elaborate on the 17 foods that we didn't know? Because I'm anxious to learn. Yeah, I mean, we wanted to put together um, a, a podcast here and an article for some of our, our let's say, our, our some of our favorite staples and some of the things that, you know, you don't really think about when you go um, shopping or when you go throughout your week um, that, that you really should be having. I mean, there's these items <clears throat> just improve the digestion uh, of everything, the whole meal that you have. So with the, the sticky fiber, remember that's that it gels up and it makes everything in your in your holding tank, which is that stomach, it makes everything gel together. And in that pH level in the holding tank of the stomach, it starts that digestive processes properly. If you don't start it properly in the beginning, you're really not absorbing it in, in completing your digestive processes very effectively. So these are the foods that are just wonderful staples that like this uh, so much such an abundance of other things, but these we felt were, were ones that really people should have on their on their schedule every every week. In their grocery in their grocery cart, you know, keep keep their eyes peeled. For oh them. yeah. And um, so, yeah. What, what would you suggest? Are they in any particular order, or um, how's that go? <clears throat> well, well, when we, I mean, looking at it, we just like to say that. Uh, you know, we just like to bring about this this list. I can can run through them real quick. You know, the yes. uh, kale and acorn squash and uh, brown rice. You know, cooked brown rice, jicama, which is that uh, that root vegetable. So many root vegetables, so good for us. Uh, prunes. You know, people don't really you know think about that. That prune is is really? that dried plum. Yeah, and it's just so much so much benefit to that prune. It, and then we get into like kidney beans, black beans, uh, Brussels sprouts are just amazing for our, um, our our system, our blood pressure, everything. Uh, blackberries, sweet potatoes, blueberries, asparagus, onion, spaghetti, spaghetti, peanuts. Oh, oh yeah, this time you know. Spaghetti gets the bad the bad rap. It's it's somewhat of a villain. Now, if you look at the serving size of spaghetti, it's two hundred calories per serving size. Mm-hmm. 
So if you stick to the serving size, you're going to get seven up to seven grams of protein hmm. per, per that 200 calories. Isn't so that... two grams of fiber, seven grams of protein for 200 calories of spaghetti. And you should have spaghetti with a lot of other things, onions, you know, vegetables with it, all kinds of other, you know, uh, beans, all kinds of other things put into it so that it makes a meal. And you're not just having some massive bowl of spaghetti by itself, which could be up to 1,500 calories pretty quickly, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, so like then uh, 15 on here is peanuts, 16 is almonds, and 17 is avocados. Mm, I love avocados. They go good with just yeah, about everything. I mean, <laughs> I mean, Greg, is there anything on here that, like, I mean, these are items that you could just check off almost every week you're going to probably have, right, Greg? Oh, yeah. I mean, if if not, you know, a good majority of them daily, you know, and... Um, uh, yeah. That's, yeah. Um, and, and that's one of the, you know, one of the initial, um, um, you know, benefits or, you know, you know one of the opening really thoughts and 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 um i had miles a, a few years ago when we started talking about these plant-based diets and the combinations of fiber they delivered to us and <clears throat> and i remember at the time telling you you know I, I had just moved to florida and i was looking to revamp my uh nutrition mm-hmm. to get more out of my nutrition and bring in more foods and different food groups eating the same things and really knowing that I could, uh, you know, function better in terms of energy and output. Um, Mm -hmm. And, you know, upon our initial conversation, I asked you, so, you know, I've always been considered fiber. I know it's an essential part of our diets and I know I like all foods. I love vegetables, fruits, so I'm pretty sure I get, you know, adequate fiber. But, you know, as we discuss more, I learned more about the, you know, which is not as commonly talked about, the, the soluble fiber. And uh, as as we went on, I, I learned quickly how, you know, it's not just uh, um, certain foods. It's, 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 it's really all foods. It's, it's, a, it's a food plan, an eating plan that encompasses all these plant-based groups, the the fruits, the vegetables, the grains, the nuts, seeds, the beans and legumes. It's not one bean. It's not one fruit. It's it's a combination of many different varieties of these foods, which which not only broadened my um, my 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 meal menus and my um, my opinions about you know these these foods coming into my my eating plan, but um, the the ability to bring these foods in my house and and have these variety of foods and not worry about why what about this seed and what about that nut and what about that this bean it's not necessarily it's about that they all deliver quality you know nutrients the vitamins the minerals the enzymes and the combinations of fiber and it's really you know as we went on you you know you taught me how to you know create meals and build meals and encompass um, um, that would encompass the, the um, combinations of these groups, and uh, you know that that was one of the greatest thing about adopting this plant based diet. I was just a vast variety of all these foods that I was not, you know, that I liked, but didn't have. They weren't fitting into the routine of my diet that needed to be that needed to be broadened. So, um, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, these food, these foods on these lists, some of them are superfoods. They're all great foods. A lot of them we all eat, you know, um, regularly. But, um, you know, just just the groups themselves that, that, that contain these foods and their brothers, sisters, and varieties of these foods, <laughs> it's, just, it's just really, really great to, you know, to have an understanding of how you can bring this stuff up, how you can combine it, get the most out of it. And then, you know, we don't have to go into it now, but how, you know, then that translates into competition where competition, your diet, your, your menu is typically a lot more limited or mine was anyway for years. Yeah, it does. Right. But you're right. You know, quite limited, but, but, you know, 
as we've learned, there's, there's no reason to, to really limit your foods. Um, as long as, you know, we're, you're, we're monitoring our, our output and our hydration and, uh, you know, we're, we're mm-hmm. able to, uh, we're, we're able to incorporate all these varieties of foods, providing a great balance of all these phytonutrients to, for replenishment and energy along the way. So, di- you know, dieting, so to speak, for these, you know, fitness events, it doesn't, doesn't have to be restrictive like it's traditionally thought of. Amen. That's what I learned. Amen. You know, like, Amen. You know, <laughs> it's funny, too, guys. Right? <laughs> if you look back, uh, as recently as five, ten years ago, plant-based diet, veganism, um, you know, without going to the extremes, uh, just the, the dietary menu or whatever, you know, f- for, for instance, you could get a bushel of carrots and tie a string around them and say, there's your, you know, there's, there's your carrots and, or whatever. But if any of the folks out there are on any of the social media platforms, I would encourage them first to get over to mindmusclememory.com because then you can find out the, uh, the, as we discussed the, the foundation and the reasoning behind all this hoopla but if you get onto like say instagram uh and, and just google in plant-based the availability like you say greg is is really vast now um there's so many ways to combine these uh any number of these 17 and beyond uh different soluble fibers into our diet so it's tasty it's not restrictive at all um i think one of the things that that is appealing for me by uh switching over is the fact that it fills me up and you know that tank that holding tank miles um you know you get that mm. that, that gelatinous fiber in your gut and it assimilates the nutrients in such a way that i'm not spiking and craving um so I would encourage the listeners to to just you know look at the go to Barnes and Noble you you know the library look in the bookstores look online for for just some amazing recipes they're slickly produced by a lot of it, their people so that you can get an idea how to put the meals together in preparation but I do think that it's key and incumbent to, uh, upon us to get to the grocery store and and uh, load up on this stuff and and you're going to have to eat it too right there's no preservatives I mean you have to you're gonna have to be judicious in your planning. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's that's very true. Very true. The um, you know the the whole process of putting some meals together and foods together to to make a meal, um, as as Greg you were talking about that. You know, we we always somewhat had this restrictiveness to oh well, like you just said, I'm just going to go to Acorn Squash. Like, oh, you know, don't go near an acorn squash because it has, what, something that's going to make me feel uneasy about myself, right? No, it, it, it's the same amount of calories as something you're already eating. You're just some flavor, roasting some acorn squash oh, it's the best. on a pan without hardly even anything else uh, available. You can cut that thing in half, put it on a pan, and roast it. And when you scoop it out, it's going to taste yummy and sweet. It's like and it's almost like, oh, well, I, should, I shouldn't eat something yummy and sweet because what? It's going to have too much sugar is what they think, is what is commonly thought. But yet it's the same amount of calories, and it has all that fiber in it, all the protein in it, all the other things, as what you're, you, you know, you're obviously not going to just keep doubling up how much food you eat. Unless you're working out a lot extra, that could you might need to add a little bit more in your diet if you just sure. under restricting your calories. But when you when something tastes yummy, and yet you're you don't have to say oh just because it tastes sweet it's not I'm not supposed to eat that because it's going to ruin my 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 muscle tone or my you know my body fat levels. No, right. it doesn't do any of that. It's just putting good calories, sticky fiber calories, good protein into your body and all the nutrients it's just it's just amazing you know how many nutrients you can actually um get as you as you go along and and <laughs> use these uh these foods yeah i agree i agree yeah you know and, it, go ahead, and, it, and it's true oh, i was just gonna say you know you, you know protein for example it, it, it begins digestion in the stomach but it largely digests in the small intestine and the role that fiber plays is to collect food and, um, you know, collect debris out of the intestines and move it along for elimination. And if, you know, uh, you know, we're not incorporating these, these plant-based foods, these, these living, live, raw foods, 
with these combinations of fiber, we're gonna just we're just gonna load up our digestive system. We're gonna it's come gonna start crawling along eventually. We're gonna smother the walls of the digestive system. Finger like mm. projectile aren't gonna be able to collect the incoming nutrients and pass it on the blood for absorption. And it's a it's a it's a vicious cycle, and it, it all starts and ends with digestion. And and uh, I remember probably about ten years ago, my wife at the time she was just I think it was the you know the the change of life there, and it was just uh, she was just exhausted, just could not get out of her own way, just had to rest all the time, and um, it wasn't getting any real uh, good feedback from anyone locally, so she called a medical intuitive doctor who essentially broke it down to saying that she was not digesting her food, not digesting mm. her, 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 and absorbing protein. And, you know, a few years later, I looked, I, I, I wasn't sure why, I wasn't understanding at the time why she wasn't digesting. We just tried different amino acids and things like that. But, you know, at the time I reflect back, she was on a high protein diet, just very few carbohydrates trying to lose weight and it was just essentially um you know predominantly protein and and it, you know and and what, what what seemed to happen is you know probably um wasn't taking in a combination of uh you know carbohydrates and fats and things that contain the balances of fiber and you know one great thing that the soluble does uh, both of them do they they, they lengthen digestion and when you lengthen digestion you improve digestion you improve your absorption of those foods and when you're just taking protein you're you know there's no lengthen of digestion it's just protein just goes in and tries to get broken down into amino acids and absorbed it does nothing for your metabolism and um it's really gonna just hamper your digestion along the way that's so interesting um so yeah you know when i look back at that whole process it's no wonder you know mm. and then um, years, you know, years, years after that, the whole issue went away. Your energy is no longer an issue. It's adopted the plant-based diet and has no no digestive issues or fatigue issues anymore. Mm. Um, so yeah, and that's and that's yeah. you know, it's interesting how you put it in that way, Greg. Um, is that he was actually doing more protein to try to lose weight, and and uh, yet. And yet, like, if we look at just uh, a brown rice, you're getting just a brown rice, you're getting five grams of protein for that, that yeah. portion, small portion of brown rice. You know, not even if you're going to just do a, you know, if you're going to add a little bit more and you could be up to, up to eight or 10 grams of protein just for your brown rice that's combined with your beans and, 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 um, and put that together with some of your sauteed, uh, peppers and onions or mm, uh, things like that. I mean, yeah, that's what we're supposed to talk. We're having fun here. This is going to be getting us all ready for dinner, right? <laughs> is, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> but but that, that's like that's excellent, Bobby. Because look at you're looking forward to something that's so good for I you. Do. It's going to help your I digestion. Do. You're going to have enough protein. I mean that those um, that's uh, that's so much better than like oh I dread eating because yeah. I have to eat it. You know, um, a small meal. It's I'm going to be hungry yeah. soon. It's a, it's a chore I have where, and these, I had, um, one of the, one of the clients just this early this week was saying, they said, wow, I kind of having a little bit of a revelation here. And I'm really seeing that the more I eat plant-based, the more I make up my own meals, these meals don't cost very much at all. Like I'm putting together mm-hmm. big meals and there, and he, and he, he said, and there's not. And uh, there's no lack of quantity. There's so much food when I put these meals together and they're low calorie. And I said, well, now, amen. Now you're like, there you go. Now you're on it. That's a a revelation (laughs) you want everyone to have that this together, your own meals and you're, you're making them delicious with your your seasonings. You're combining these foods together, having adequate, um, you know, dietary fiber first. In fact, looking at that as your primary you know, things that you're filling out. And when you look over at the protein side of it, you're having a sticky fiber, you look over the protein side, and every single time he's seeing that his protein is at the adequate amount for a male, you know, 25, 30 grams of protein for a plant-based meal. And and so that's our new thing. Hey, 30, 30, 31 grams of protein, sticky fiber, he's good. You know, that, 
and and he's like they're so filling and they're they're inexpensive. He just it's like you put together the meals and and he's he's loving it. Well, you, you get the leftovers yeah. too. I know another thing I'm looking forward to uh, since I went plant based. Believe it or not, is my blood test, my blood work. So I go for blood work. Mm-hmm. I've been on the plant based diet for probably four months at the time. And I get the results back, and I'm astonished. My wife was astonished. Now, her and I enjoy the same diet that you guys are speaking of right now. But my blood work, and I don't know if I mentioned it before, was spot on. Cholesterol, you know, no raised creatinine levels because I used to eat such a high-protein, beef-oriented, bodybuilding chicken diet. All that dissipated. It, it, it vanished. My cholesterol is spot on, good cholesterol, bad cholesterol, and it's completely unadulterated attributed to the plant-based diet, mm. to introducing, you know what I just had, yeah. uh, and I'm still getting hungry with the sautéed onions and peppers, by the way, Miles, but I just finished <laughs> leftovers from last <laughs> evening where the missus made um, peanut butter cauliflower over rice and arugula. Now, again, mm. if the mm. listeners are out there, the, the, the options are so enhanced and the creativity level because the awareness is so raised at this point is phenomenal. wasn't there five, ten years ago. Who'd have thunk it, right? Mm-hmm. Who doesn't love peanut butter? Well, if you're not a big fan of uh, perhaps the taste of cauliflower, the texture is great, so just consider it as chunky peanut butter. And it was phenomenal, and it was filling, and mm. it was a leftover from last night. Um, and and uh, getting back to the fact that you know 25 grams of protein per plant-based meal, that's outstanding. It just really debunks so many myths that, that, that we're programmed to believe uh, it's just fascinates me. Uh, I'm, I'm always tipped over. Yes, I know. Yeah, it, it's true. We are um, so many people are geared on the, the protein side of things, yeah. and that's 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 actually okay. I mean, we still don't mind that because because you know if you just yeah, go strictly. and eat a, a bagel, and well, if you go and eat a bagel in the morning, and you go and have you know a salad without anything else but just lettuce at lunch. You know, you're you're not you're not working on the protein throughout the day. Right. You know, you you got to work each meal to bring that protein level up, so you're actually digesting you know twenty to thirty grams every single meal. Right. Sometimes people don't don't do that, so you still want to really be aware of that. Sure. Mm. Yeah. No, I'm not saying I, I think it is for those of us that are 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 just dabbling or toying with the idea of going plant based. I think just an introduction to to Get on over to mindmusclememory.com. This uh, particular article, which we're discussing today, is found on the blog, 17 Foods You Didn't Know You Could Improve Protein Digestion, and they contain sticky, soluble fiber. You know, you can introduce this stuff. Um, we didn't flip a switch overnight, you know, like a water spigot, and all of a sudden, you know, nothing. Um, we still enjoyed, you know, some, some animal protein and, and whatnot, but the more that we introduce the plant-based... I think like you alluded to, Greg, regarding, you know, the absorption rate and it, 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 it slowed down our digestive systems. And that is, and I've told, said it before, I'll say it a thousand more times. It is, it is absolutely improved quantum, you know, exponentially speaking. So I, I'm an advocate, uh, anybody out there, if you think, you know, it's going to require prep time, you're right, it does. But, you know, it's not your... This this flesh suit that we walk around in and, and inhabit throughout our lives worth it, you know? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. flesh <laughs> for suit. For sure, my flesh suit. <laughs> 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 but prunes, so prunes, huh? I ate them when I was a little kid. You know, if I were ever get constipated, my mother would say, "Eat a prune." But it looks like these. Well, prunes, is, yeah, isn't isn't that a good isn't that a good thing to remember? Yeah, <laughs> that 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 they knew it was going to help your digestive pattern if your digestive tract is in better speed and in better control. Yeah, then you're going to be healthier. Yeah, you know you have you have more vitality when you're when you're not constipated, right? <laughs> so, no, it's a, I mean like, it's it's a it's a touchy s- subject, but it's. It's oh so true, and and the energy that that uh, or the fatigue that your your wife experienced about ten years ago, Greg, is a testament to that. And um, boy, it's so funny looking back, hindsight being yeah. twenty twenty. I can relate, and, and I know that since since I've made the switch, and now we're all plant based, but my energy levels and my strength, um, 
is just it's night and day night and day i if i could shout from the mountaintops i, I mean i would and just to to, to mm-hmm. all its benefits mm-hmm. really good and and you look yeah. like a kid again too yeah you, we you, always well did. thank you well thank you <laughs> T- tell that to my receding hairline that's what <laughs> <laughs> well that's one of the benefits to this uh eating these great fibrous you know nutrient dense food it's going to improve our quality of life and it's going to literally make us Live longer. I mean, we we've seen, you know, you know, maybe, you know, we've heard of uh, blue the, zone. the blue zones. Blue right? zone. Yep. Blue zones around the world. Say, yeah. Those, yeah, those centurions those, uh, concentrated. Yeah, there's, there's a large concentration of centurions around the world. There, different areas that are, you know, prevalent with these centurions, and the 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 they examine the variables in their lifestyle and. The common factors were mainly nutritionally and the fact that they're eating these uh, plant-based groups, including the legumes, the beans, the nuts, seeds, fruits, vegetables, mm-hmm. and things like that. So mm. the, uh, there, is, there is proof and evidence out there that the quality of life and the longevity that we live is correlates with uh, what we, what we uh, uh, put in our body and what we absorb and um uh, and then again, you know, we, yeah. we can reiterate, we've said any time benefits, you know. I just saw a commercial just uh, watching the hockey game before you called about the Nature Valley uh, granola bar. And she used the word, um, um, the word, uh, what's the, uh, not, uh, 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 geez, I'm sorry. I forgot the word. Um, anyways, uh, sust- su- sustainability. Yes, there you go. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sustainability. <laughs> she said she went over the fruits and the nuts and the uh, gotcha. the grains in the bar and talked about how sustainable it was. And and let's face it, when you're out uh, hiking the Appalachian Trail, you need sustainability, right? Amen. You need um, you need a, you need these these groups and combinations to give you long lasting energy, physically, mentally. Uh, that we've talked about the increase in bowel function and bowel health and. Uh, and you know, for me, you know, with um, diabetes or, or you know, running in my family, you know, I just, I really, um, I'm really sensitive to the uh, energy I get from the leveling of blood sugar throughout the day, especially with my exercise routines. And mm-hmm. it's been one of the great stacking these plant-based com- combined meals up one after the other throughout the day. My energy. Physically and mentally is very steady, um, and all the while yeah. we're, we're lower, lowering co- cholesterol. So, um, and more benefits to these fi- to these sticky fibers. Oh yeah, the antioxidants, the phytoflavonoids, yeah. the the other mm-hmm. things that come with all of this. These items in this list are just are just so researched already and pronounced already, and and you know so calm. So you just have to get out there and just. Work, you know, run through the article, look through, you know, what you're, you're shopping for, what you have in your in your shelves already, and, and make sure that you just have these things as the, you know, throughout every week, or you're working through these, or at least, at least, you know, maybe something, maybe not a fan of Brussels sprouts, but there's ways to cook them or to or to dry them up or different ways to, you know, to get them in. Um, where you can roast them, you can pan sear them. You know, you find find some ways to to put them together. Nothing like it when you get some that are pan seared and a, a little bit of a um, little bit of spice on the top, and and boy, they're delicious if you if you yeah. just try them all out. And you don't have to eat them all the time, but certainly, like a, I would love to just I have sweet potatoes at least once a week. Yes. But, um, you know, I would love to, sometimes I eat them more than that, but at least once a week yeah. is, uh, is good. And the whole family, usually we made, we made some last week. It took us like three to four meals to actually go through. Everyone has just had, cause you, you know, serving size, just, you don't have to overdo it. You just do a serving size for one meal. And we, um, you know, I think what we did is we, um, uh, boiled those ones. We had them on the side. So we just add them into a meal. And the serving size, and it took us like four meals to go through all the, the sweet potatoes. Mm. So we actually did have them multiple times throughout the week, and we just had a serving size each thing with a meal. Mm. In fact, one of the meals was the 200 calories of uh, pasta with some uh, white beans and, and um, uh, white bean red sauce with onion in it. 
right, on that on that one serving of mm. pasta, and there was a serving of sweet potatoes on the side. So we had a serving of beans, grains, and then the sweet potatoes, with, and of course with the onion too, and it was a delicious meal. And boy, that was one that I kept you know, satisfied for hours. Like you could, you could tell, I could tell it wouldn't even leave my stomach for like an hour to an hour and a half. I was just just satiated, just happy. Yeah. Didn't you know? And then after that, I had so much energy for hours. Yeah. And it's a mindset. I think it's a habitual routine that, you know, we've been, we've been for lack of a better word, pro- programmed to eat a certain way from the media, uh, our peers, our parents, our grandparents, uh, the culture that we grow up in. So it's going to take effort, right, fellas? It's going to take a minute. But just like anything yeah, else, yeah. over the course of a few weeks, it becomes habitual. And aren't we worth that investment? I mean, the seasonings mm-hmm. that, av- that are available – in combination to dress up, you know, uh, a Brussels sprout, um, uh, you know, mm-hmm. and, and to use uh, jicama. Uh, my wife uses jicama all the time. So it's just a mindset. You know, I would encourage everybody once again, um, you know, really get get over to mindmusclememory.com, explore the blog, reach out to the coaches over there. You can dial up Miles. You can get a hold of Greg. They'll be happy to walk you through and uh, take you in detail um, you know, mm-hmm. find out yep. what, what your specifics, your specific needs are and, um, you know, dial you in personally so that you can be empowered and enabled to, to take the next step. And, um, you'll be glad you did. Honestly, you really will. Mm-hmm. And, and don't forget, you know, we know that the blue zones, uh, diet, like you said, that cent- uh, centurions that have been, you know, living around a hundred years old, healthy, you know, uh, are you know the um, low in, incidence of illness because they're eating plant based like this, and it's passed down from generation to generation. We've just lost a little bit of generational right. gap in there, yeah. Of of actually, you know, how to cook, how to make sure we have these things all the time. And I'm going to add one more thing to that is that you know there's, I mean, there are. Uh, we just saw a, a, a photo of a 83 year old or 84 year old woman who. Um, changed her life around and she's now like all toned up like a bodybuilder. She's in the UK and she's got like 800,000 people on her, uh, her follower wow. um, following her because for three years she, she became like a, the, you know, a bodybuilder. And, and so we're putting in a new position to this at M3. So let's keep our bodies in shape, not just eating good, not just for our mind and our, you know, Ill- instance of illness and these things, but let's keep let's go ahead and get our muscles in shape and stay strong all throughout those. We're kind of like a new generation of experience, a uh, new experience generation to see how we can stay solid with our muscles strong and balanced with eating this way. And yeah. uh, and we'll see as the years to come. Yeah, I'm excited. But we know we 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 know this story is out there. People who have been out of shape for years and they turn it around, they're strong tone in their, in their late seventies, eighties, nineties, even you see them in there and they do weightlifting like, like we show everyone and they eat like this. And we want everyone to be like that. We want everyone to know that this is the capability you can have as you go throughout your life. So come on over. Definitely. Come on over, jump on in. The water's fine. I promise you, I tell you. Well, fellas, another action-packed uh, information uh, value uh, that you gave us, a value yeah. bomb, another value bomb dropped by the M3 folks, <laughs> Greg and Miles, and uh, we appreciate you listening. Miles and Greg, I appreciate this episode, and uh, we have been listening to another episode of the Fit Diet Podcast with the founders of MindMuscleMemory.com, Miles Betcha and Greg Rando, and until next time, this is your host, Bobby Stein, saying... Thanks for listening and take good care.